authorities in western Pennsylvania have charged 11-year-old Jordan Brown as an adult. The boys will have one trial together in adult court. The length of his sentence is also the length of his life. They're not old enough to drive, drink, or vote, but in America, kids as young as seven years old can be tried as adults. When you hold the youth accountable the same manner and fashion in which you hold an adult, it's just not right and it's not fair. Michael Kemp knows what it's like to be a kid locked up in an adult prison. You never know what one of them adults might do to you, so you just be feeling like... Man, what's going to happen to me? He was locked up for the first time when he was 12 years old here at Oak Hill Juvenile Correctional Facility. Oak Hill is not, wasn't, in my eyes, it wasn't designed to rehabilitate you. It was designed for punishment. You know, having bar wires around the gate and just preparing you for more criminal type of lifestyle. Like most kids that serve time as a juvenile in the U.S., he got into trouble again. At 17, he was charged with armed robbery as an adult. He says for a kid... Being in an adult prison is a constant struggle to survive. They know how it is when you come off the bus and know that you don't have anything or know that you don't, you're don't you just far away from home, so they pull you in. But in reality, they're trying to get a favor out of you as far as a sexual act, you know, and then you get victimized or raped, you know, and then you become someone's person. He was spared from sexual abuse, but many kids aren't so lucky. In fact, one in five victims of sexual violence in jails and prisons are under the age of 18. Youth and adult facilities are 36 times more likely to commit suicide than those in the juvenile system. On any given day in America, 10,000 children are held in adult jails and prisons. Most of them have never been convicted of a crime. And kids are fair game for solitary confinement. Kemp says for five months, he spent 23 and a half hours per day locked up alone. I could have went crazy in a cell for that long and just holding someone in a cell with nothing to do for that long. Critics slam the practice of putting kids in adult jails as cruel and unusual punishment. They are less capable of understanding the consequences of their behavior. Their development is incomplete. And that's why the Supreme Court struck down the death penalty for juveniles in 2005. But today, the United States is the only country that sentences kids to life without parole was viewed as a substitute uh, to the ultimate penalty. There are now 2,500 inmates that were sentenced to die in jail as children. This is a peculiarly American phenomenon in which we uh, tend to believe that the uh, harsher the penalties, the greater the public safety payoff. Kids should instead be rehabilitated, says Lubau. That's the focus at Washington, D.C.'s newly opened New Beginnings. And yes, folks, be careful what you wish for because you may go to get rehabilitated and go to a place like this where you're going to get uh, basically shock treatment as a part of your therapy. So I think the, the lesson here, the moral lesson, is to allow the families to be good, uh, basically, providers to, for them to actually do what they're supposed to be doing, which is to be good parents and not have social workers, not have governments in your business. I mean, there are so many stories I came across today where it was um, young people in the mall just taking, uh, there's like two, I think it was two boys, they just took this one girl when she was away from her parents for a little bit and they just beat her up and held her down, just kept beating her up. Now I know this stuff's been going on for a long time and years, but it does, it has escalated more and more and it's, and it's just more of just about just this inner um, anger or hate and they're just taking it out on everybody that they see so you know a lot of these young young people are not actually angels <laughs> I, in my opinion i think they're worse and i saw some of that just in the early 80s when i grew up uh but the thing that i did and uh this is just my own little personal experience but and so i'm not condoning it but i stood up for myself eventually i mean i came from a little uh broke i came from a broken home and then i was uh, basically, you know, living with my grandparents in this kind of richier neighborhood. So it didn't really work out for me too well. And I did get picked on called Zach the Lego Maniac and, oh, you know, your parents are divorced. And uh, eventually it just, they kept, kept it up, kept it up, kept it up. Well, I stuck up my, for myself, got a little knife, you know, just a little, I think it was a little pocket knife or something. I said, if you ever talk to me or get my face again, I'm going to kill you. And you know what? I wasn't taught that. I just knew it. And, you know, I never got messed with again as far as the whole bullying thing goes. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty bad now, so 
and you can go down to the bottom to see what are some of the things that uh, qualify as treatment, such as um, uh, takedowns and that, and cold showers, I think. So, six-year-old girl handcuffed by police over a tantrum. We saw many of these stories before about drawing on the desk, and a girl drawing on the desk, doodling, and then they had the police come and arrest her instead of having her just, you know, probably stay after and, and maybe clean desk or something like that, you know? But, uh, but yeah, it goes on there. It says that a six-year-old girl in Georgia was handcuffed by police and charged with assault after throwing a tantrum in her elementary school. It says here a local TV affiliate uh, reports that um, this individual who is in kindergarten was detained by police after her alleged outburst. It says here our policy is that any detainee, ooh, a terrorist suspect, a detainee transported to our station in a patrol vehicle is to be handcuffed in the back. It says there is no age discrimination on the rule, says the police chief, uh, Dre. So um, I'm going to keep moving because I have a lot to get to, including some other videos. Um, that's interesting though, the word detainee, because I was just listening, um, to a radio broadcast yesterday, and the individual mentioned how protesters are being referred to as detainees, as terror suspects. Remember, I, t I was talking about how, um, uh, there's these fracking protesters, they're being, they're being actually viewed and handled as insurgents, as terrorists. So you can see where what this whole thing was based off of. And it wasn't 9-11 because we know 9-11 was a farce, right? Like Pearl Harbor and all the other things. Remember the Maine, you know, the Gulf of Tonkin, everything. And it's always to bring in some kind of um, agenda. So in detention for forgetting a rubber school accused of being heavy-handed as children are punished for failing to come ready for class. So... And he says here, angry parents have accused teachers of running a military school after they handed out hundreds of detentions to children for forgetting items, including rubber, rubbers, I guess that's erasers, and pencil sharpeners. And next up, we have truancy crackdown to include children, government to publish absentee figures for reception year while behavior advisor, ooh, a behavior advisor, hmm, behavior modification or management advisor maybe, who knows, highlights children who fail to attend uh, basically, their early indoctrination into this global scientific dictatorship, and of course, if you have a temper tantrum, or if you don't, if you don't like this, if you don't like being forced to go to one of these things, uh, you know, you may have throw a temper tantrum. You don't want to be there, but see, your parents they can't take care of you at home because well, they got to go out and they got to work um, at least one third of the year to pay taxes to the state so that they can carry out these eugenics programs. Then we have 10 disgusting examples of very young school children being arrested, handcuffed, and brutalized by police. You can go in there and check it out, um, all of them. I'm going to keep moving for time's sake, but at an elementary school in Baltimore, I said here, three nine-year-old girls and an eight-year-old boy were arrested for fighting in March out of their elementary school in handcuffs. The police department is defending the handcuffs are handcuffing these kids, which they usually do. They usually defend what they do. It says here in, in Connecticut, a 10-year-old boy was actually arrested by police for giving another student a wedgie on a school bus. And remember, it's just like the South Park episode recently. I, I was glad that they came out with what they did because I thought the other episodes kind of stunk. And this was the first one I saw that it actually liked in a while. Uh, because they basically said, you know, everybody's bullying. Everybody bullies each other. The best thing you can do is to stand up for it. But no, see, under this um, this kind of scientific dictatorship, or you can call it a Luciferian system, it's all about tolerance, right? And you have these virtuous people teaching about tolerance. Well, you can't, you don't have to tolerate people. You can stand them to a certain degree, but you shouldn't have to tolerate everything, right? So... That's just my personal opinion. Again, just last year, a five-year-old boy at a public school in Stockton, California, was arrested by police and handcuffed with zip ties because he was committing battery on a police officer. So how much damage can a five-year-old kid really do to a police officer? Uh, it says here the boy was ultimately sent to a hospital and forced to undergo psychiatric evaluation, where he's probably medicated, and the situation made worse. <laughs> flying above or flying through downtown Chicago it's 930 at night they don't even have lights on they're flying about 10 stories above the street. 
So yes, folks, that's uh, some footage from Chicago, my old neighborhood. Well, not downtown, but uh, yeah, black helicopters. And I have seen them flying around that area when I go back to see family members. So, okay, so acts. Oh, and one quick uh, note is that those things, when they're flying around, usually they're actually going to top of buildings and not just any skyscraper, but banks. So this isn't for terrorists. This is for regular people. This is for, as the economy degrades further, social programs are taken away, the banks have robbed all your money, and there's too many people, not enough food, as they say. There is enough food, but it's just, you know what I'm getting at. Uh, they're going to be get, going to the top of these uh, banks, at the top of these skyscrapers, and pulling out all these rich bankers as the, as the people are getting violent. And that's what it's for. That's what the checkpoints are for, and that's what DHS is getting ready for. You know, in Greece, you have, and in Europe, you have suicides now due to the economy, increasing in suicides. They call it economic suicides. You know, they call these active shooters, alone shooters. These are guys that lost everything, have got lost their families, lost their pensions, can't survive. And uh, this is what happens. But acts of terror in our nation's schools can active shooters be stopped. So it goes on there and says, a mechanism preventing active shooter attacks is the ability to identify student potential threat in the earliest possible stages. So you can go through and list, uh, see the list that they give for, uh, you know, identifying these lone or uh, these active shooters, you know, habitually makes violent threats when angry. Well, that could have been me defending myself when I was a kid, right? Uh, bringing a weapon to school. Well, there's people in rural areas that bring weapons to school. And and they've been doing that since they were young because they're responsible. And, uh, you know, it goes on here and it goes on. It's just, oh, he's fringe or a peer group has fewer no, no friends. Well, what if you're getting picked on, right? <laughs> so just a bunch of garbage nonsense. And it, it, they're actually having a big thing about it. Look at this. IR Tactical Active Shooter, Whitewater, Wisconsin, 2012. And I got the nice long horns or devil horns up here for the police state. And I got their DHS and their police, uh, uh, basically Humvee battle ready uh, truck and of course students will be participating as hostages this of course is to condition them that everything's okay and this is just the norm also to accept a police state it says here america's love affair with firearms is national insanity so why would americans be concerned right why would they be concerned what the government is buying these days hollow point bullets hardened checkpoint booths radiation pills that's right they're also having exercises at the social security office um, for angry uh, recipients, right? When basically when they get cut off, they've also been having uh, Army National Guard has been holding exercises uh, just the past month uh, to a possible due to a possible uh, basically unrest, civil unrest due to an economic crisis. DHS buying 450 million bullets. We knew about that, but they're also stocking up on these hollow points that will include 750 million hollow point ammunition for short range. Firearms, that's right. Something I just learned recently, the Hague Convention of 1899 uh, prohibited the use of the international warfare of bullets that easily expand or flatten the body as these uh, basically hollow points do. They're not made to wound, they're made to kill. And they have twice the amount of the American population. America's love affair with firearms is national and insanity. Insanity, says Cynthia Tucker. Well, let's not forget back uh, in 2009, right after Obama got elected, what? The Department of Defense tried to cut off sales of spent cartridges cases to U.S. ammunition manufacturers. But they backed off after public outcry. It left me no doubt about her sexual preference. Bar Raffaele, uh, an Israeli model, felt violated after airport pat-downs by female security guards. Let's not forget the ruling that decided that jail guards may strip search individuals arrested for minor, minor technical violations such as parking tickets and so forth. And then what? How the U.S. uses sexual humiliation as a political tool to control the masses. So they're doing this to the airport to basically um, humiliate you and basically force you to capitulate. They were doing it in Iraq and they were doing it to what? Bradley Manning, who was in solitary confinement. And Stanford Prison Experiment used middle class white Americans for what? Many of the prisoners passively accepted psychological abuse. The goal was also to induce disorientation, depersonalization, and de-individualization. So here we are again, the arm more American troops posting with corpses in Afghanistan. Is the Olympic host London ready for the world? Well, they're only missing one thing, panic. After giant sandcastle demolished after it was just made due to safety fear. But don't worry, army snipers will be above you to protect you.